Hello, everyone, and welcome to our first IPTES 201 webinar for SmartBear Academy. We are happy to have you today. So I'm Vincent. I'm uh, one of the senior developers uh, here at IPTES. And, and I'm, 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 I'm Laurent. <laughs> uh, I'm Laurent, director of product at SmartBear and one of the co-founders of IPTES. Uh, also, another announcement. Uh, we have our annual user conference, SmartBear Connect, coming up this fall. So this year it will be hosted uh, in Boston's Marriott Copley, and it will be on the 29th and 13th uh, of October. And uh, same thing, I'll send a link uh, to join the, the conference if you want to, uh, to book a place. So thank you, uh, Vincent, for this introduction. Today we're here to talk about tip test. Uh, before we dive in the, the product and the, the demo, I want to make sure everyone understands who is SmartBear and why we're here for. So SmartBear is um, a company that focuses on providing uh, software teams with easy to use uh, tools that help them uh, deliver the best product faster than ever. So it's about um, time to market. Uh, so far, we have more than 6.5 million users uh, across 194 countries. Uh, SmartBear is uh, not only a, a strong innovator, but is also committed to the uh, open source community with tools like Swagger, SoapUI, and now HipTest Publisher, uh, thanks to the uh, latest uh, acquisition of uh, HipTest by SmartBear. And uh, I will not get into all the details of our uh, product uh, portfolio, but that gives you here a, a breath of uh, the SmartBear uh, portfolio covering the entire uh, life cycle, product development life cycle, from development to test and ups, uh, both at the uh, UI level and uh, at the API layer uh, as well. We also support um, collaboration, so with IPTEST, uh, what we're going to see uh, during the demo. So IPTEST is a, a collaborative uh, platform that helps teams to first collaborate on the ID using behavior-driven development and also test uh, their code continuously. And uh, last but not least, what we'll see also during the demo, uh, generate a living documentation from, from the test. So that mainly uh, address uh, agile and DevOps teams. And for the teams that use a more traditional uh, approach to QA, we also have uh, QA complete to address their uh, they needs. So uh, what we'll address now during this 201 session, uh, I will first start by a brief introduction about behavior-driven development. So we'll try to answer in two minutes what's uh, BDD. And then uh, during the demo, uh, we'll create um, a scenario. Uh, we'll see how to automate it or to scale your test automation framework and integrate uh, hip test with uh, your CI CD pipeline. Uh, we'll also show the, which is one of the great outcome of uh, the teams that use BDD to generate a living documentation, so to leverage you test uh, into a, a living documentation, unlike uh, Word uh, documents or uh, wiki documents that are never up to date with the application itself. In this case, that's a living documentation always in sync with the app. And last but not least, at the end, we'll also show you how to run tests uh, in the cloud uh, with uh, cross-browser testing. So the test that we will, we will create and uh, automate uh, will be run also uh, not only locally but also in the in the cloud okay so uh, what's uh, behavior driven development bdd is first and foremost about uh, collaboration so the idea is to have what we call a free amigo session so uh, a session with um, business stakeholders so usually the proxy is the product owner but we can all also have uh, business users uh, that attend to such uh, meetings, uh, have also developers, testers, and all together the idea is to discuss the, the behavior of the, of the feature in order to create a shared understanding before starting uh, development. So uh, during this uh, free amigo session and, and to, to capture uh, the discussions, what we'll usually do is create some examples that describe the different behaviors uh, of, the, of the feature and enable the teams to create this, uh, this shared understanding. So basically, uh, once we 
uh, once we are uh, have done this uh, this free amigo session uh, the outcome is some uh, acceptance test acceptance criteria that have been defined everyone uh, uh, agreed on and it's time for the dev team to kick in to kick in so we use these acceptance criteria to drive development and as a as developer they will have to first automate uh, the the test and of course at the beginning this test will fail because there is no uh, implementation of the feature and to progressively implement the feature meet the different examples the different uh, acceptance tests and making sure that uh, they progressively pass for teams that use uh, TDD as well, and, and uh, you should definitely combine behavior-driven development with uh, TDD uh, before uh, starting the implementation of the of the feature. You should also write your unit test and use them to uh, to make sure you have a great design of your of your feature. So once the feature is implemented, it should uh, you should have the unit test that pass, and then of course the the BDD scenarios that you have created that uh, so this is what uh, behavior driven development is in just a nutshell and now we'll see our uh, hip test can help you create a new scenario and capture the the discussion in order then to drive development yeah and just before starting the demo we have a, a quick poll uh, to get an idea from you the audience so which one of the the free amigo are you are you developer qa uh, more product or business uh, it's, <laughs> it's really nice. It's all about 30%. No, we get more QA people now. <laughs> so yeah, apparently we have about, uh, yeah, about 50% of the audience today uh, belongs to the QA, uh, a bit more developer, quarter of you, and uh, also uh, product business people, uh, around 20%. So. <laughs> Thanks for the answers. So there will be, uh, you'll see values and benefits in this process during this demo for uh, all of you. At least uh, we, we hope so. So uh, let's switch to uh, now the, the demo. So for this, uh, for this demo, uh, I will use an example, the coffee machine. So we have already used this example for uh, IP test 101 session. So at the beginning, when I create the scenario, I will use the same flow, but then after the idea, of course, will be to automate it and integrate with the, with the CI. So the, the example in this case is a simple uh, web coffee machine. So that is support, supposed to, uh, to serve uh, great coffee, but also from times to times that complains about uh, missing beans, uh, missing waters, uh, and so on. So, we have the web app and we also have uh, the project, so in test with uh, existing uh, scenarios. So we have created in this case already uh, 15 scenarios for this, uh, for this project. And if you are interested on your own to, uh, to play with this, uh, with this project, you can easily generate it. So just uh, click a new project and in the, the examples, uh, example projects uh, list, you will see coffee machine and you will be able to generate exactly the same one as the one I'm using for this demo. By the way, you will also have in the description of the project uh, two links for uh, two tutorials. So the first one uh, to help you get started with behavior driven development and the next one uh, to help you uh, integrate with UCI in five minutes, uh, no more. So uh, let's uh, have a look now at the different uh, scenarios and, and the way we have organized the project. So for this coffee machine, that seems to be pretty simple. We can see that, uh, in fact, we have a couple of different features. And for each feature, uh, one or multiple uh, scenarios. So we have uh, the nominal uh, use case, the nominal feature, which is serve coffee. And this is typically the way you will describe uh, a feature if you, uh, you use the agile process and, and you use behavior driven development. So in order to get a benefit as a role, I do uh, an action. I use the feature basically. And here for this feature, we have one scenario, which is simple use that describe the behavior of the feature. So usually um, if you use BDD and, and the Gherkin syntax, uh, you will write your scenario using uh, describing first the context, so given, 
um, given the context, when I do an action, then I, I have the, the check part. So in this case, given the coffee machine is started, when I take a coffee, then uh, coffee should be served. That's very uh, simple and nominal case. In our uh, example, we can see we have a couple of other features and including uh, display errors, which is one big feature. So that's the reason why we have uh, split, uh, splitted it in, into uh, three features. So beans, grounds, and water. So for the beans, uh, we just say we have to uh, handle the, the beans and we have three different scenarios, three different use case uh, for this one. So the first one is message field beans is displayed after uh, 38 coffees are taken. So after 38 coffees, we start to see the message. It is possible to take, so up to 40 coffees before there is really no more beans. And if we look at the scenario itself, we can see here that uh, we take coffee, the uh, 40 coffee that should be served. And when we try to take uh, one more coffee, then the coffee should not be served. And we see uh, the, the message. And the last scenario for this feature is after adding beans, uh, after the, these 40 coffees, then the message field beans disappears. So just to show you that when you use behavior driven development, uh, just by uh, looking at the, the features themselves, and we strongly recommend you to, organ to use the folders and subfolders of your test to represent your uh, feature structure. And, and by reading the name of the scenarios, it's pretty easy uh, to dig into the project and understand what are the different features and, and the different use cases without having to open and look at uh, um, the scenario in, in much uh, details. So that's it for uh, the first overview of the project. What we're going to do now is to create um, uh, our first scenario. So for this demo, we have, uh, I will show also the way it works with Jira, but just keep in mind that uh, it's not the topic of, the, of this webinar. So I will go pretty quickly and it test integrates also with Trello and many other uh, web uh, project management tool. So for this uh, project, for this demo, we have a new user story to implement. A warning is displayed when this scaling is needed. So we have to handle as part of our project also uh, this, uh, the, the descaling uh, errors. So what I will do is first uh, create a new uh, subfolder, so a new uh, feature, which is uh, descaling. And then I will create inside descaling uh, my new uh, scenario. So if I, I would like to do it the right way, I would also have to uh, write uh, a description uh, as a role in order to get a benefits. I do, uh, I do an action. And uh, let's create a scenario, which is uh, this scaling is uh, needed. So I open my scenario. This scaling is needed. And the first thing I will do is link it with uh, Jira. So for those of you who use Jira, you will see that the integration is pretty simple. You just do drag and drop. So pick up the test scenario, drop it here, you click link, and uh, in just a, a flash, we have uh, created a link between the user story, a warning is displayed when the scaling is needed, and our uh, IP test scenario. I can click here, navigate back to IP test, and in IP test, we have automatically created this tag and this link so that I know this scenario is linked to my Jira user story. Now, uh, let's start with uh, the the design of the scenario itself. So uh, we're going to uh, start by the context. So given uh, the coffee machine is started, and what you can see here is that as I'm writing my, uh, my step, I have a couple of suggestions. These suggestions comes from uh, existing steps that have been defined uh, in other scenarios. And in, instead of writing my step, um, with the same intent, the same meaning, but in a different way, I will reuse the existing step. So given the coffee machine is started, I can reuse this way and build my scenario using a consistent business terminology. Then in the context, I want also to make sure I handle the different exceptions. So I handle, uh, in this case, uh, the water tank. So I'm going to reuse once again here the, the existing step and I handle uh, the beans and 
I handle coffee grounds. So basically, what I'm uh, saying here is that uh, I've handled all the existing exceptions, except uh, the descaling one, which is the one I want to I want to test uh, with this scenario. So given this context, when I take so in this case, uh, I will reuse a step with a parameter. So when I take uh, 500 coffees, then uh, warning, the scaling needed should be displayed. Should be displayed. So what we can see here is that there is no suggestion. The reason is, there is no existing step uh, that display uh, such a warning. So I'm going to create uh, a new step, what we call a new action word. Next time someone will write a warning, uh, he will have the suggestion, he will be able to reuse it, which is what you can, uh, we, you can see here. So if I just click uh, here, I will navigate to the warning step, warning uh, the scaling needed. I can see it has been added to my action words list. So now it's part of my uh, business terminology. And you can see here in the action words tab, all the different steps that have been used uh, for the design of my scenario. So these steps uh, here define my business terminology. If you look at the way I've designed the scenarios, uh, there are a couple of things that are uh, important. If you wanna make sure uh, not only you, uh, you facilitate collaboration, but you also facilitate the job of the, the dev team and the test automation team. First, what we can see here is that I really focus on the, the business and the behavior of the feature. So I'm using um, a declarative style for writing the scenarios. I'm not uh, focusing on the steps, like you know, I press the on-off button uh, and then uh, I press uh, uh, one coffee and, and so on and so forth. I'm just focusing on the behavior. So what, what's important for me for the business in order to drive the conversation with all the stakeholders and create a shared understanding is given the coffee machine is started. That's it, that's the context. And I handle the different uh, exceptions. Once we've done that, when I take 500 coffees, then the warning uh, should be displayed. Here again, for if you look at the warning itself, uh, at the check parts, usually this is what we do at tip test, where we use uh, behavior driven development and it test to test our own platform. Uh, we typically use should uh, for, for the checks so that when it comes to uh, automate the test, we know what, what are the, the, the context, the given parts, the steps that we, we have to implement. We know what are the checks part and the, uh, the when part. And, and using this uh, approach, it enables us to automate, for example, using different techniques. If it's a context or if it's a check, we may not need to uh, automate to implement this step at the UI layer, we might just use uh, uh, automate at, at the, um, the API layer, service layer. For the when part, so the actions that we uh, do uh, on the system, here usually we want to be very close to the user itself. So we'll automate these uh, steps at the UI layer. So that's just one tip, but uh, very useful when it comes to um, automate. And uh, You've seen here how we can create very easily with FIP test uh, a new scenario uh, using a consistent business terminology that was uh, also um, used to drive, uh, that would be used to drive development and, and that enabled us to create a shared understanding between product owners, developers, and testers. So now, Vincent, now that we have uh, designed our scenarios, can you show us how to automate it? Yeah, sure. But just before one uh, pretty quick poll, uh, once again, it's the almost last one. Uh, yeah, it starts. Uh, so yeah, uh, we'd like to know how do you execute your test uh, in your company? So is it uh, full manual testing, mix of manual and automation, which is generally the, the one we see the most? Is it fully automated? And for those who, who do a lot of automation, uh, do you do the automation with uh, cloud execution tools uh, such as cross-browser testing, source lab, and so on? And not really surprisingly, 
but it's more than we used to see. Uh, we see that the, the majority of you uh, use a mix of uh, automation and manual testing, but this time it's pretty impressive. It's 91% of the people uh, doing manual and a uh, mix of manual of, and automation and just 4% uh, of you uh, having uh, fully automated tests. So let's have a look to how we can easily uh, share, um, share, sorry, uh, how we can easily automate the test uh, with it test. So <clears> the <throat> first thing to know, uh, when you want to have automation in your project, there's, there's basically two phases. Uh, the first one is what we call the bootstrap phase. So when you start the automation, so you've got, I don't know, 10, 15 uh, different scenarios and you say, okay, no, I want to get them automated. So I will really do the, the first phase, getting the first uh, scenarios uh, automated. So that's the bootstrap phase that I'm going to show right now. And then later on, which uh, is the really long phase, it's the scaling one. So adding new scenario, implementing them, automating them, and so on and so on. So the process is a bit different, but you'll see it's using all the same tool. So first thing, the bootstrap. So for the bootstrap, uh, one of the easiest way to do that is to use IPTest Publisher, uh, the cloud version, which is available in IPTest directly in the automation uh, tab here. So IPTest Publisher is an open source tool which role is to translate your scenario, your action word, your folder into executable code in any of the framework and language you can see there. One thing to note, uh, <coughs> it's not because you wrote your scenarios with uh, the Gherkin syntax in IPTest that you need to automate them with Cucumber or Specflow, Behave or Beat or any Gherkin based framework. And just to show you, what I'm going to do is use the export with Java JUnit. And as you may know, uh, this is definitely not a uh, Gherkin-based uh, framework. So let's have a look to the code we can download directly from inside the text. So we get a zip file, and inside the zip file, uh, we'll see four different files. First one, a config file for a test publisher. So as I said, what you see here is IPTest Publisher cloud version, but there is also a command line version that you can install on the developer computer, on the QA computers too. And this config file will already point to the correct project with the correct language, with some default option that you can tweak later on. <coughs> the second file is one file I'm going to get back to later on, but it basically makes uh, the synchronization between what you have in your code and what you have in IPTest. And really interesting file is first is uh, the test. So by default, we generate the test as a single file. It's just to ensure it works out of the box. Once again, what we want is people to bootstrap pretty really fast uh, when it comes to automation. But of course, there are simple, uh, one simple option uh, to enable. So we keep the same hierarchy uh, in the test than uh, there is in IP test. Here, uh, so we can see our different tests. And if you're a bit familiar with Java, what you will see is that all the tests are in fact uh, written simply by calling function on an object called action words. What that means is that this file is an auto-generated file. You never have to manually modify it. In fact, you just let IPTest Publisher generate it and it's going to work. Uh, you don't do manual changes there. The only place where you will do manual, uh, manual implementation is in this action word object itself. So uh, as Laurent shown, we have uh, multiple action words inside the project and each of them becomes a new uh, function that uh, the developers will have to implement. So here you can place basically whatever you want. So you can use Selenium uh, if you want to test a, uh, a website, you can use Apium if you want to test a mobile app, you can uh, query some APIs. It's completely up to you, up to what you want to check uh, technically in the team. One important thing here is that each action word being uh, one different function, they become single point of automation. So the more you use action word, the less work you have to do. For example, when Laurent uh, wrote his example, there is seven steps, but he just wrote one new action word. So that means that there's only one to implement. So that's one of the powerful feature of the action world. As I said, uh, it's where the automation team kicks in and will well, fill in the blanks and write the automation code. 
So it's possible that in your company, in your team, uh, you are missing either uh, the resources or the time to uh, do the automation because uh, it can take time to do automation. Uh, what I wanted to show first is a quick video that was made by our colleagues uh, from Test Complete who made a really great integration between IPTest and Test Complete, enabling you to uh, implement those action words without having to uh, have some programming language because it relies on record and replay. So let's have a quick look. Here they created a project in IPTest written with uh, BDD. Uh, style, so we can see here a, a classical uh, given when then uh, test with different uh, with different parameter or at least a scenario. So what they did uh, is create inside test, com test complete uh, a new uh, a way to import a IP test project. So you simply have to uh, sign in. It's going to import uh, your different projects. So here the the import the one they, they just created before. And here you will see that uh, each folder became one feature file. Uh, so more or less what we have with it test publisher and also that generated the different action words. So here it's more uh, looking at steps. Where it comes really uh, powerful and interesting is that uh, they can say, okay, I simply right click on uh, one of those features and I'll have the possibility to record it. So like this, record the routine. It's going to open uh, Internet Explorer to run the test. So they fill in some data. Oh no, in that case, they just uh, open uh, the website. And here you can see uh, Test Complete has generated the code uh, simply for that. So step by step, uh, you will be able to automate uh, your different action words simply uh, with some record and replay. So no need for really lots of technical uh, knowledge to get it working. And contrary to lots of other record and replay tools where you record the complete test and it's a real pain to maintain, here you record step by step, which really helps you uh, when it comes to scale uh, with the automation. I'm not going to show the full video, it's available on, uh, uh, on test YouTube complete on, yeah, on the YouTube channel. So here we get our action words and we want to automate them. Of course, I will not automate it during the webinar because it's not going to be really interesting for you. And one other thing to note, as Lauren mentioned, uh, you can regenerate this coffee machine example. For each of the language, we also have a sample in our GitHub repository. So if you look for HPS, so it test publisher sample, uh, you will have this example of the coffee machine with all the action words already automated, the coffee machine ready to run, and uh, an integration with a CI. So if we get back uh, to the code here, uh, we can see all our action words automated. So once this is done, you simply run the test and you can see uh, the, the test running. So this is uh, the code I downloaded just uh, before uh, Lauren did this demo. So we are missing one important thing, which is uh, the scenario we wrote just before. So let's see how we can uh, update the code with this new scenario. This time we are really in the scale phase and I can't really get back to uh, the automation tab because I would regenerate also the action word, lose the work of the automation team, and they are not going to be really happy with that. So what we are going to do is use IPTest Publisher at the command line version. So first thing I'm going to do is to regenerate the test. As I said, uh, the tests are auto-generated. So I said with test publisher, just regenerate the tests. So now it's going to regenerate all the test cases. So apparently it's working. So we get our uh, descaling test that just appeared there. So uh, the code that uh, I want work wrote, uh, but there is this function about uh, warning this scaling is needed. We don't know how this works. So what I'm going to do is once again use it test to be sure, but this time there is a command line, uh, which is based on the YAML file I was talking to you uh, about just before. And the command line is called show action words diff. So what it does, this command, it's uh, comparing what you have in it test, what you got in your YAML file, and making a summary of it. So here, without much surprise, it tells me there is a new action word created. Of course, uh, this command also supports deleted action word, renamed action word, and so on. 
And what Iptest Publisher does is also give me the command line I simply need to run, so simple copy paste like that. And it's going to provide me the skeleton for uh, my new action word to implement. So I simply copy that, paste it in my action word library, and here I have to do the automation part. So just to make it quicker, I've got a cheat sheet, so I can simply copy paste it here. And now, if we run the test again, we should see 16 examples are working fine, hopefully. So, okay, we got our 16 tests that have been run. One last thing to do now that we've uh, updated the Action World Library is say, okay, I want to regenerate the YAML file. So this time, uh, once I commit and I push, my colleagues uh, won't have a message saying that there is a new Action World because it's already automated. So this is pretty simple. It's still using it as publisher. And now I simply type action, minus minus Action Words signature. So this time, next time uh, someone runs the command show action what's diff, it's going to say, okay, everything's up to date, no problem. So here I've got my test uh, running. I could be able to uh, push that to the CI, but just before, what I wanted to do is to show you how we can refactor the test that Laurent wrote uh, to make it a bit more powerful. So let's get back uh, in the test. And in the descaling part, uh, one thing uh, Laurent didn't uh, do here is that this coffee machine is pretty powerful and it's able to, uh, if you set the water hardness, it's able to say, okay, the descaling might come quicker if uh, the water is really hard, so full of uh, calcium, I think. So what I'm going to do is uh, create data sets. So we're going to have uh, three test cases. So we got really soft water, we're going to have medium water, and of course, we're going to have hard water. I'm going to create a new parameter. So that's a parameter for the scenario that I'm going to call hardness. And there will be uh, a free hardness type. So A, oops, B, and C. And for each of those hardness, hardness, there will be a different number of coffee number to take. So for soft water, 500 coffees. For medium water, after 400 coffees, it's going to complain uh, that descaling is needed. And when you get really hard water, like we have right here, it's going to uh, complain after 300, uh, 300 coffees. Of course, we now need to use uh, those parameters here. And as you're going to see, it's pretty simple. So first, I need to set the water hardness. So, if I reuse an existing action word, which is I set water hardness to a given value. So, oops, sorry. And I'm just going to remove that. And so I said, I said water hardness to a given value. So here I'm going to reuse my parameter hardness. It does adds uh, equal sign just before because you recognize it was uh, a parameter from the scenario, and here, same principle. I'm when I take a certain amount of coffees, then the warning should be displayed. Now, what is really interesting after this uh, short refactoring, first, we're going to have three different tests from one single scenario, and second thing, I didn't create any new scenario. I just reused existing one, no, uh, action word, sorry. So the only thing I have to do now is say, okay, if I run if test publisher and say, okay, we generate the test. I don't have anything else to do. And this single test will become free test. And now, if I run MVN test, we're going to see uh, that now this time we've got 18 tests working. So that's great. And as you can see, I can update my scenario, refactor them, reuse existing action word, and I got no work to do for the automation. Now that everything is automated, what I want to do, of course, is run that with a CI tool. So to do so, first thing we need is a test run dedicated to the CI. So it's called CI in this project with lots of imagination. Two things to note about this specific test run. First, it's dedicated to the CI. Only the CI should push the results in it. You should not use it uh, for manual testing. You should not use it with developer pushing the local results or things like that. 
it's dedicated to the CI and only the CI should be able to send the results there. Second thing to note, it's, uh, li it's uh, the life cycle of this test run is the same as the one of your product. So it starts when you start automating and it will end when you stop uh, working on your product. It's uh, one test run that will live as long as your product lives. And once you've got this test run, so first thing I'm going to do is add some scenarios because those ones are automated now. Because of course you only put uh, the fully automated uh, scenarios in this test run. And once you've got uh, this test run ready, you may want to have it uh, linked to a CI tool. To do so, it's pretty simple. You go to the Automate tab, and here you have uh, three command lines. So those command lines will be copy-pasted to the configuration of your CI tool. So the two first one will regenerate the test cases based on this test run to ensure that you are really running the test as they are defined in IP test and not something that's been modified uh, by someone who wants uh, the test to run even if you did something wrong. And after the test, you simply push the results back using any of those report formats. So what I'm going to do right now, uh, just to speed up, I'm going to play the role of the CI. So I'm going to take uh, our configuration from Travis CI. It's the one used for this specific project. And I'm simply going to copy paste the command line. It's going to be way quicker than wait for the CI tool uh, to kick in. So first thing, I will generate the test from IP test. So it's just going to update them based on the content of the CI test run. I run my test. So once again, I should have 18 tests working. That's good. And now I can push the results back to if test using uh, the JUnit XML report. And now I should see 18 tests have been imported. In just a few seconds, that's better. And now in if test, in just a few seconds, we'll see that uh, this gray area becomes uh, suddenly uh, green. And we can see that uh, slight bump here in the execution history where we went from 15 tests to 18. Now you may have seen uh, one notification saying that there was a new living documentation generated uh, while I was uh, synchronizing the test run. And I think Laurent will like to talk about this. Yeah, so I, I'll take the, the wall back. So once we have uh, automated and executed our, our test, uh, what's uh, in very interesting now for uh, especially the product guys, but uh, also for all the team is uh, the living documentation. So living documentation uh, is a documentation that will be generated by a test uh, using leveraging all the BDD scenarios that you have created and the living documentation basically follows a test run. So it's, it also takes into account uh, the uh, execution of, uh, of your scenarios. So if I pick up the living documentation I've created here that follows the CI test run, I can see this uh, gorgeous uh, documentation. So that's the nominal uh, scenario, simple use that we've seen uh, at the very beginning of the demo, given I, the coffee machine is started. When I take a coffee, then coffee should be served. And here, what's interesting is that uh, this, um, this scenario, this document, is uh, reflect the true behavior of the application in production because uh, it was generated uh, from a scenario that a test that is executed as part of the CI CD pipeline. Same thing for um, all the, the errors, so including the scaling, the scenario we've created together and, and that Vincent uh, updated uh, by the way. So we can see here the scenario, the same scenario that you can see here it's written in a, um, it's readable by business people, it's written using our uh, business terminology, the shared language of the team. So very easy to, uh, to understand, very easy to share. And here again, it reflects the true state, of the, the true behavior of the application in production because this test is executed as part of the CI CD pipeline. So that's the value of the living documentation that is always up to date, unlike uh, uh, any Word document or wiki. Uh, we also able to, we are able to generate uh, the history of the feature because based on, um, based on the, the execution uh, of, the, of the test uh, in, inside the, the CI test run, we know the first time the test was added 
was executed and, and when the, then the feature was deployed in production. So uh, we can say that the feature descaling has been created. So today at uh, 3 p.m. Uh, 38 uh, for those of you who are in, uh, in uh, Europe uh, and France time zone. Uh, and, and same thing for the other. So for every feature, every single feature, we have the history of the feature and we have the same thing at the, uh, let's say, product or application level. So we have an act, we generate an activity digest and basically we can see for uh, the last two weeks or the last three months or whatever we want, uh, what uh, are the features that have been added, what are the features that have been removed and what are the ones that have been uh, updated. So in this case, uh, we have uh, removed uh, twice the descaling feature it's because we, we keep uh, using this, um, this uh, project for the demo. So we create and we remove the, the descaling feature. But I, I mean, you, you, you get the picture as a product uh, team it's very uh, easy for you to, uh, for example, during the retrospective, after the two week sprint to, to look at what has been really delivered to, uh, to the customer, what has been deployed. So just select uh, past two weeks and you will see all the features that have been added, uh, removed or uh, modified. Same thing, so we use it at tip test for every uh, retrospective, but we also have a quarterly meeting uh, and we can use this one. So show me what happens the last three months and uh, it's not uh, just a report that was written by someone, it's generated based on the test. So what you can see here is that if you follow, if you use behavior driven development and follow the, the good practices that we did share with you, uh, it tests and distributing documentation can become the product uh, knowledge based uh, of you organization. So it's much more than just uh, tests. Yes. So let me take back the screen one last time and uh, just show you how easily we can uh, integrate uh, IP test with a cloud-based tool. So in that case, we're going to use uh, cross-browser testing. So uh, when I did my example, I was using uh, HPS Java J unit. So it's a plain Java J unit. As you saw, it's a pretty simple code uh, in the action world implementation. This specific project, we also have a version that is uh, just, let's say, a bit better because it's using still Java J unit, but it's running the test using Selenium to really uh, click everywhere uh, in the coffee machine web version. So here, if we have a look at the action words, we can see a bit different. It's a bit different from the other ones. Uh, we can recognize some uh, Selenium uh, commands like uh, clicking on element or checking the, the text and so on. What we can also see is that uh, the test cases are a bit different. I'm going to get back to that later on uh, about the templating system. Uh, but yeah, they're a bit more complex, but as you can, you will see, it's something that goes really smoothly. When you have uh, your action words implementing to work with uh, some Selenium driver, so locally or uh, at first you will always run it locally, uh, getting them running with, uh, for example, CBT is really simple because the only thing you need to do, uh, instead of uh, getting a local driver, so uh, your local Selenium instance uh, that it is installed on your computer, you can use a remote driver, so it can be, uh, in this example, cross-browser testing, but it could be source lab or browser stack, uh, which uh, also be, are also able to use this way. And with those remote drivers, you suddenly have the capability to have your same test run on multiple platforms. So this example, so Java J unit Selenium, is also available uh, in our GitHub page, and you'll see how you can easily integrate with uh, CBT. So once you've done that, if you go to uh, your cross-browser testing example, you will have, for example, the possibility to uh, play the video of your different tests. So of course, uh, this test is pretty simple. It's just getting a coffee and sadly, it's not even a real one, uh, but at least you can uh, play with it. Uh, you can do snapshots, you can uh, have a look at the network while your tests were working. And it's really uh, smooth uh, to integrate that. Once you've got some uh, Selenium test running, it's just a matter of playing a bit with uh, the way you get the drive. Now I want to come back uh, a bit to the Surf Coffee example. And as I said, 
you can see this test a bit more complex than the one we had before because there is lots of setup here and uh, some variables defined, uh, some imports from uh, Selenium and so on. And uh, you may remember that I was saying you should never manually modify uh, the test when they were generated. So how can you handle having the test case generated with so much import and so changes compared to the, the default one? I can uh, just show you uh, the basic surf coffee. That was the one as it's uh, generated normally, and that's the one with Selenium. To go from this one to this one, it's in fact pretty simple. And the way to handle that is to use the templating system of ePTest Publisher. So here, for example, each folder or each feature in ePTest will be rendered uh, using the folder.hbs uh, template. So what I did is take the template from uh, ePTest Publisher GitHub repository. So I took the one from uh, Java J unit. And I completed it with, uh, for example, here, uh, getting a web driver from Selenium, doing some imports, creating a CBT helper to help me set the score on CBT and so on. And with pretty basic knowledge of templating, because this is just handlebars, one of the simplest uh, templating system, you will have the possibility to really tweak uh, the way the code is exported by a test publisher so it really matches uh, units. So I think that's it uh, for the demo, and I think we have not some about ten minutes uh, to answer uh, the different question oh. you may have. Yeah, for the before the Q and A session, I would just like to do a wrap up for uh, all the teams. So some of you were more um, business uh, people, so either product owners or business users. Others were QA and developers. What's interesting uh, here, what you've seen during this flow is that um, IPTES can be used as the collaborative platform for all the free uh, roles, the free amigos. And it's very easy for product owner, business user to contribute to the design of the scenarios. So create new scenarios, uh, create data tables, create more uh, examples, basically. And what you've seen as a developer is that uh, for you, it's very, uh, the, the way you will consume uh, the, the scenarios that have been defined by the product owners is using your uh, favorite framework, uh, the fa your favorite language, because uh, once again, IPTES Publisher is, is very open. So we support multiple lang languages and, and, and frameworks. So we don't want to change you a bit. And basically, the the same test within a test that has been uh, defined in a business readable way can be either executed manually. These are some capabilities that we have not uh, highlighted during the demo, but it test also provides some um, uh, traditional test management uh, capabilities to help you keep, keep track of manual test execution. And the exact same scenarios can be also executed uh, automatically, which is the second part of the demo that you've seen. So there is no two scripts to write and to manage, one for manual test execution, one, one for test automation. No, just write one scenarios and the exact same scenarios can be executed either manually or uh, automatically and consume as a script by the dev team using their favorite IDE and, and, um, uh, and, and language. So that's the, the value of uh, behavior driven development and it test with, uh, with this approach. And just before answering your, your question, uh, if any, uh, we would just like to have some feedback from you. So I just start a new poll uh, just to have a feedback on uh, how you, if you liked uh, this training. Uh, so yeah, if you liked it or not. Uh, it was really useful for you. Just yeah, let too. us know. And uh, if you have any uh, feedback on the content, because you can't have open questions apparently in uh, Zoom, uh, you can send us uh, some emails at uh, feedback at deeptest.com or contact or support at deeptest.com. They all work. And we'd be really glad to have some uh, feedback. Uh, if you think that there is uh, there was some missing things, things that you expected to see and so on. Uh, yeah, Just feedback it, is gold, so don't hesitate. So yeah, we, we have one question, Vincent, related to the background uh, of the scenario. If you can just show us. Yeah. Uh, Thanks for your feedback. Yes. So let me close everything from Zoom because it's hiding uh, IPTest. 
Uh, yeah, uh, so yeah, the, the background in Cucumber, for those who are not familiar with it, it's a list of steps that is executed before each scenario inside uh, the feature file. Uh, we also support that in IP test. Uh, we call that a setup. Uh, but here, for example, for the beans uh, section, uh, we can see that uh, the setup, we ensure that the, the confirmation is started. It can be pretty useful. And we handle uh, everything. So uh, it's everything, all the errors, like the, the water trouble, the, the coffee grounds, uh, etc. So here it is. It's the the setup part uh, is the equivalent of the background uh, in a test. And we got a question, question from manual test execution. Yeah. So can you just show us, Vincent, how to execute the manually the descaling test? Uh, yeah. So that's uh, that's pretty easy. I don't go through automation first. And uh, so for the Test, uh, manual test run, what we generally advise is to have one test run for each uh, sprint uh, you have. So let's say we started sprint, sprint three. Uh, so you create one test run for each of your sprints. You have multiple choices, like you can have all your test cases. You can use uh, another test run uh, as the selection, for example, that can be useful for all the regression tests you want to play at every iteration. And you could also select a subset of tests. So for example, I'm going to take surf coffee. I'm not going to take descaling because I don't want to take 500 coffees manually, but I'm just going to uh, check a few ones like uh, messages are based on language. So I simply create uh, my test run. Right now it's making a copy of the different scenarios and action words so I can keep working on the scenario without impacting uh, the manual testing phase. And uh, once you're here, you've got a resume test uh, button. And there is two ways to execute your test. So either you give it uh, an overall status, or so let's say this one passed. I can go to the next test case. I also have a, uh, a shortcut, so passed and next. Or I can also do some step-by-step -step execution. So let's say this first step passed. This second one passed too. So once everything is green, uh, the test is marked as green. Or I can also uh, mark one step as failed. And of course, uh, the test is marked as failed. And once this happened, uh, you can, of course, add comments to help the dev team understand what happened. You can add attachments like screenshot and so on. And you can even uh, create a Jira issue in the project that will be linked to the specific test. Uh, that will uh, be helpful for the developers to, to be able to get assigned uh, to this specific bug. So I hope this answered your question. Uh, Any other question? Not yet. No more question. Well, in case you uh, have any, uh, I mean, other question in the future, uh, you can uh, use the uh, in app chat. Yes, so it's here. So just by clicking here, you can get in touch with the hip test support team and we'll be more than happy to uh, help you. Uh, you can also contact uh, um, support uh, at uh, hiptest.com. Uh, That's uh, one uh, other way to, uh, to join us. And I guess <coughs> uh, we are. Um, we are all set. Uh, yeah, just one last thing. If you have a question, you can also use uh, community.iptest.com, uh, which is a forum where you can be in contact with other uh, IPTest users. Uh, uh, so if you want to have uh, ideas like how, to, how the other one uses IPTest and so on, uh, that can be pretty interesting. And we have last one last question. Will there be a recording available? Yes. Uh, don't worry, uh, you will receive a recording by mail in 24 hours, uh, so don't worry. Uh, even if you arrive late, uh, you'll be able to, to see the full uh, webinar. Okay, so it's time to say bye-bye and thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for, for your attention. For your time. Have a great day and uh, talk to you soon in IPTest. test.